Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make this super cute and of course super easy coffee mug cozy. Perfect to take out with you with your insulated mugs so that there's no risk of dropping and of course it helps to keep it extra warm. Before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course hit the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials or one of my free crochet patterns again. As you can see, I've made this using various shades of pink, but this time I'm going to use some different colours. So let's gather those materials that we need to make our crochet pattern. I'm going to be using a 6mm crochet hook alongside some chunky yarn. You're also going to need a tapestry needle and of course a pair of scissors for all these ends we're going to need to snip. So I'm going to be using paint box yarns, Simply Chunky, in three different shades. You can work this in just one colour if you'd like to, but I've got the um, Soft Fudge or Caramel, uh, which is shade um, 308, shade 309, and Paper White, which is actually more of a bit of a cream colour, um, which is shade 302. I'll pop a link in the description box so you can find where to get these beautiful yarns from and they really do um, come out absolutely lovely. So I'm going to kind of work it again in a bit of an ombre effect. So I'm going to start with my darkest colour, go to my medium colour, lightest, medium, darkest. So there are two options here to do our foundation chain. Because this is going to be fitting or snugly fitting around a coffee mug, I really want to make it as stretchy as possible but also so that it's going to cling to the mug. So for this we are going to be using the foundation single crochet. Okay so instead of doing a normal chain we're going to learn how to do a foundation single crochet at the start. Don't worry it's perfectly easy. The first thing we're going to do is we're just simply going to make a slip knot with our main colour or our first colour in my case, that is the darkest colour that I'm using. And I'm just popping, move that out of the way so you can see. Just popping that slip knot onto my hook. And we begin by yarning over and pulling through to make our first chain. And we're going to make a second chain as well. With the foundation single crochet or foundation double crochet in UK terms, we simply insert the hook into that first chain that we made, yarn over to draw a loop up, but instead of doing our normal yarn over and pull through two, we're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop on our hook and then yarn over and pull through the two loops on our hook. And that creates our first single crochet or double crochet in UK terms. Now we're going to do a foundation chain of 24. So that's number one. To do number two, we're going to make sure that our slip knot is facing at the top insert our hook underneath this fake V at the bottom here. So we've got two loops here, there's one and there's two, and we want to insert our hook underneath those both those loops. So we're picking them both up, going to yarn over, bring our loop through, yarn over, pull through that first loop on our hook, then yarn over and pull through two. So that's number two completed. Going on to number three, again we're looking for that crossed there underneath those two loops of our stitch. So you're inserting our hook underneath those kind of twisted V's, yarn over, bring our first loop up, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over and pull through two. So it's very similar to our standard chain, it just has that extra step in the middle. So that's one, two, and three. Number four, so insert underneath those two loops, yarn over to draw a loop up, yarn over, pull through that first loop, and then yarn over to pull through both loops. Turn your chain over to find those two loops to go underneath, yarn over to bring your loop up, You'll notice that I'm bringing the loop to the same length as that loop underneath before yarning over and pulling through the first loop, yarn over and pull through two. That will help to ensure that your chain looks even at either end and doesn't pull too much. If you find that you're getting a particular, particularly curly 
or kind of closely pulling in. It's probably just your chain's a little bit too tight. So that's one, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Now, of course, if you're really struggling with this part, you can do a normal chain of 25, working into the second chain from hook um, and double crochet into each of the chains so that you have a, a row count of 24. So if you're looking to count it, I'm kind of flipping mine over to the right side and counting my Vs as normal. So up to number eight, I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you once we've got a total of 24 foundation single crochets. If you're unsure if you've done both your loops now that I've just done that one wrong, just take it out and start the loop again. I lost concentration, I was counting. This is number nine. So I've just completed my 24 foundation single crochets and you can tell which side is which. You've got those twisted bits that we were just working into. That is not our stitches. Our stitches are on the other side. So I'm just going to bring those around, turning it so that it's bringing the stitches towards me. I'm going to fold my foundation chain in half, making sure that my chain is not twisted and I'm going to join this to create a ring. This bit here is our turning chain, don't worry about that. We want to insert our hook under that first stitch that we made, and then we are going to bring, oops, making sure that the chain is not twisted, we're going to bring that working yarn over the top, and we're just going to slip stitch to join. There we go. Now, as you can see, it does, feel like your work is twisted but all that is is that you need to we go at the end we're going to sew these two bits together so that we can make the bridge a little bit neater so we've already done row one going into row two we're going to chain one and then into each stitch around we're going to place one double crochet in uk terms or a single crochet in us terms so we simply insert the hook into the same stitch where we placed our slip stitch Draw a loop up, yarn over and pull through two, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw a loop up, yarn over and pull through two. I'm going to repeat that the whole way around. So we should have a total of 24 single crochets or double crochet in UK terms when we reach the other end of our chain. Oh, no, it's not a chain, it's our foundation. There we go. So keep working around and I'll meet you at the end of row two, which is actually row one. And we'll move on to change colours. So this is number 24 for me and I just want to again I'm going to double check that we are not twisting anything so that all my stitches are at the top and that my slip knot is at the bottom so this little bit here don't worry about it we're going to sew that together it looks a bit messy but I promise you it's absolutely fine so we've got our slip stitch and our chain one we're going to insert our hook into the top of the first stitch that we made and ta-da, it looks a lot better once we've reached that point. So we're going to change colours. I'm going on to my colour two, which is shade 308. Please excuse the state of this ball. It still works as yarn. 
So to change colour, I'm simply going to make a loop with the tail yarn at the back, pop that onto my hook and just bring it through the loop on my hook, pulling down to tighten so I can do my chain one in my new shade, ready to start row two. And row two is exactly the same as row one. We're going to insert the hook into the same stitch that we slip stitched into. I'm going to hold my tail yarns together and work over them and just place a single crochet into each stitch around. So we're looking for 24 single crochets at the end of row, it's round, working in rounds, at the end of round two. So keep working around, you can work over your tails if you want to, placing a, a single crochet in US terms or a double crochet in UK terms into each stitch around. And I will see you at the end of round two. Again, at the end of round two, we've got our slip stitch there, our chain one that we made in our new colour. So we're just going to insert the hook into that first stitch that we made and slip stitch to join the round. Going into round three, we start with a chain one. And once again, we're just going to place a single crochet into each stitch around. So work round three with a single crochet in each stitch around. So you should still have a stitch count of 24 at the end of round three. And I'll see you round there. So at the end of round three, we've just completed our second row in our second colour. As always, we've got our slip stitch and our chain one, and we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch to join, and then we're going to change colours again. So I'm going to, oh, I do have my scissors here. Just going to disconnect these colours, leaving enough yarn, of course, to weave in these ends later because that was annoying me, there we go. And we're going on to cream, and I'm going to show you the state of this as well. Because this uses such little yarn for this crochet pattern, you can use any kind of scrap yarn you've got lying around. I would always make sure that it's the same type of yarn, so make sure in this case, this is all 100% acrylic, um, and ideally the same size. So these are, this is all chunky yarn. So I'm changing to my lightest color, Again, I'm just chaining one with my new colour, making sure that all these are secure and I will work over, I'm going to work over my tail yarns as I go. So I'm inserting into that stitch, holding those tail yarns against my project, bringing that loop up and pulling through two. Again, just check they're all nice and neat. And I'm going to proceed. I kind of work over the next four or five and we're just placing a single crochet into each stitch around. So at the end of round four, we should still have 24 stitches. Keep working around and I'll see you at the other end. So that is stitch number 24 on row one, two, three, four, row four. So I've got my um, slip stitch there. There's my chain one in my new colour. 
So I'm just going to insert my hook under that first stitch again to join this round. Just yarn over, pull through both. And we're going to do another round in this colour. So we just work our first stitch into that same stitch we did our chain one and then work all the way around the other 23 stitches and I'll meet you back ready to change colour again for round number six. You should still have a stitch count of 24 at the end of this row too. And that is the end of round six. Goodness me, we're nearly there. Again, as always, just slip stitch to the top of that first stitch. And then we're going to change colour. And I'm going to snip this yarn because it's knotting itself up. We're literally going to mirror exactly what we've done at this side of our beautiful coffee cosy, which is very coffee coloured as well. So I'm going to start by attaching colour two in the same way that we did all the way round. So you just need to work two rows in colour two, two rows in colour one, and then I'm going to meet you back when you've finished the last row in this darker colour, but I'm going to show you how to make an invisible join at the end of this because we don't want to see any lumps or bumps when we've popped this onto our coffee cup. So keep working, doing two rows in your medium shade, two rows in your darker shade, and I'll meet you at the end, ready to deal with all of those ends. I'll give you all my top tips for weaving in your ends and tell you more about the, um, the other matching or corresponding crochet patterns that go with this one. I'll see you in a moment. I've just completed my final row um, of 24 single crochets. So instead of slip stitching to join our final row, we're going to do something a little bit different, which is an invisible join. So we simply um, cut off a length, making sure that we've got enough to weave in our ends. And we simply, instead of slip stitching to join, we're going to bring our hook up so that, that stitch is unfinished going to pop our yarn onto our darning needle and what we're going to do is insert our needle underneath that first stitch in the row where we would have slip stitched and as we pull on that it brings those together so we're going to create a fake stitch so the next thing we do is go underneath towards the back of the back loop of that final stitch that we made so just that back loop only and as we pull through, it creates a stitch. Just need to secure that at the back of this project. You can either just pull it through, you don't want it too tight because you still want it to be stretchy, and then you can weave that end in. Now I'm going to first of all do a little knot. I want that to be super secure. So to weave in all of our ends, I'm just going to turn mine inside out because we've got all of these little things to deal with. So it's now the wrong way round. First thing, we're going to weave this one in because it's already on our needle. And we just need to weave it in and under these stitches backwards and forwards three times. We don't want it to come through the front. We just go through the back loop of some of these stitches and then see where it's come out there. I'm going to go in one loop and go back through the same loops again. And that's, now because this is gonna stretch this way, we wanna make sure that these is not moving so the ends don't pop through. And I'm just gonna sniff it closely, but it's not pulled tight. It's just that we're popping it away so no one can see it. I'm gonna do the same with all of these ends. Just simply pop them onto your darning needle. If you've worked over them, then you only need to go through two times. So we can see where I've ended there. I'm gonna go in one stitch, 
and work underneath those there. You can't see the needle through the front that much, so I'm just going to pull that through. I don't want it super tight because I want to be able to stretch this over my coffee cup. And I'm going to come back the other way. And there we have it. Making sure that those loops are pulled through, but they don't need to be super tight. So you can give them a bit of a pull and then just snip those ends. They will not show through, I promise. See? What ends? So go ahead and weave in all of those other ends. The only other bit we need to deal with is this bit at the bottom. So I'm going to thread this onto my needle. And we're going to join up this starting point here. So it looks a bit twisted and a bit messy. It's fine because we're just going to stitch through the top of this stitch, the first stitch that we made. And that will join those two ends together. And it's not obvious that we've done that. So again, I'm going to weave back through a different part of the stitch just to make sure that they don't move too much. And I'm going to loop down the back to the reverse of my project through a stitch. And that will reduce the lumpiness. There we go. And you can barely see that join. Now I'm going to weave this in. I am going to do a little knot on here. I know I probably shouldn't, but I like knots. I know knots don't come undone. Not that this is anyway, because it had a slip knot anyway. Again, I'm going to weave that end in in a moment, but just for ha-has, let's pretend that this is all finished and ready to go on our coffee cup. Coffee cup. So there we are. There we have our completed simple and easy mug cosy. Nice and stretchy at both ends because of that foundation single crochet that we used. And I must admit, I love these colours. They scream coffee to me. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get made aware as soon as a new video becomes available. I hope to see you again soon.